I was talking with Gillespie on the way over. He said, yeah, you talked about it.
to your servant, in which you have made me whole. This is my comfort in my affliction, that your promise gives me life. The insolent utterly deride me, but I do not turn away from your law. When I think of your just decrees from above, I take comfort, O Lord. Hot indignation seizes me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs in the house of my Remember your name in the night, O Lord, and keep your law. This blessing has fallen to me, that I have kept your precepts. The Lord is my portion, I promise to keep your words. I entreat your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think on my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay. The cords of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I rise to praise you, because of your just and righteous decrees. I am a companion of all who fear you, of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning.
reading from Leviticus, the 20th chapter. You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my rules and do them, that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. And you shall not walk in the customs of the nation that I am driving out before you, for they did all these things, and therefore I detested them. But I have said to you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give it to you to possess, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has separated you from the peoples. You shall therefore separate the clean beast from the unclean, and the unclean bird from the clean. You shall not make yourselves detestable by beast, or by bird, or by anything with which the ground crawls, which I have set apart for you to hold unclean. You shall be holy to me, for I the Lord am holy, and have separated you from the peoples, that you should be mine. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Acts, the tenth chapter. The next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry and wanted something to eat. But while they were preparing it, he fell into a trance and saw the heavens opened and something like a great sheet descending, being let down by its four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him again a second time, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and the thing was taken up at once to heaven. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commands us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word, and the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name, that I may walk in your truth. the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Grace 
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes when my son gets out of line and a little unruly, I have to put him in his place. I have to remind him that he is not the head of the household. He does not get to run things. Unfortunately, he cannot choose dinner every night because I simply cannot eat pizza and pancakes every time. I'm sure you love it when your parents do the same thing to you. When they talk down to you, belittle you, and act as though you're just some little child and put you in your place. But sometimes you need to be put there. And so today, I am here to put you in your place, not as your parents do, but as a pastor, as God puts you in your place. Some of you may not need a whole lot of help to do that, for you yourselves know the Ten Commandments. Most of you, if not all of you, have studied them, what their meaning is. From beginning to end, you shall have no other gods, you shall not covet. You know also yourselves, your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. The things that you do to place yourself in God's position and judge and do what is right and wrong in your own eyes. You yourselves know your own words to put your neighbor in their place when they really need it. You yourselves know your own thoughts that have no place running through the head of a good Christian person. You know your sin. You know of your conviction before God that you stand before him a sinner. Or at least you should. Because there may be some of you who are a little bit more like Peter who would say to God, Oh no, Lord, I have let nothing unclean touch my lips. I have done nothing wrong. I have done nothing that is common and unclean and unholy. I am good. Which in essence is to say, I am uncommon. I am not like Abraham or Isaac or Jacob. I'm not like Peter. I'm not like Paul. <coughs> I am unique. I am so special. I am not like any person who has ever lived in the history of the world, ever. I am clean. But really, by your own arrogance and pride, you are making yourself common and unholy. For this we do have in common with all of the human race, me, you, and every person inside and outside of Scripture, we are by nature sinful, unclean, unholy. By those things which we do with our hands, say with our lips, and think in our minds, really the word unclean is probably more of a compliment when we consider just how disgusting and despicable our behavior, our words, and our thoughts are. Are. You see, we would make ourselves unclean, whether by our humility and knowing our sin, or by our pride and arrogance, we are unclean. Your place is among sinners. That is where you really fit in and thrive and do not stand out beside those who have rebelled against God, even the devil himself. Your place is with condemned sinners in hell. But we don't get to choose our place. The animals in the Old Testament didn't get to decide whether they were going to be holy or unholy. They didn't decide whether, well, I think I'll be clean today or unclean tomorrow. No, that was decided for them. They were separated by the Israelites, separated by those who were above them. And so for us, too, we are separated, the common and the uncommon, the holy and the unholy, by one who is above us. God himself separates and makes clean and unclean. You do not get the final say. 
God has chosen you. God puts you in your place. And he does it not by your own actions, not by your thoughts, your words, or your deeds, but God puts you in your place through his Son. For you yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. You yourselves know that Jesus, being baptized, went out preaching and teaching the kingdom of God. You yourselves know of his miracles that he performed, healing and taking away the sins of all people. You yourselves know that he was condemned of your sin, was lifted up upon the cross to die for you. You yourselves know that he gave his own holy body and his precious blood for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And you know too that he was raised from the dead on that third day and appeared to many people and even today appears to all who eat and drink with him. You yourselves know your place in Christ. For you yourselves also know what has happened to you in your lifetime. You know that beginning at your own church, in your own baptism, you were washed, anointed, with water and the word, and Christ's righteousness put upon you. You know yourselves that your pastor has stood before you time in and again, and said as a called and ordained servant of Christ, that as Surely, as your pastor pronounces these words to you, it is as though Jesus himself says to you, I forgive you all of your sins. That is your place. Your place is among those who have been baptized. Your place is among those who have been forgiven. Your place is as, though, as with those who come to the supper of the Lord and eat and drink the very body and blood of your Savior for your life eternal with God. That is who you are. So have nothing to do with that which is unclean and common and unholy. Have nothing to do with that sin that would tempt you because that is not who you are. You are redeemed. You are baptized. You are a child of God. Your place is to sit and to live with God for all eternity, now and forever, as his very own baptized, forgiven, redeemed, sanctified, holy child. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense.
art in heaven. heaven. The Lord be with you. And in your spirit. O God, your almighty power is made known chiefly in showing mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we may be called to repentance and made partakers of your heavenly treasures. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Gracious Father, your Son grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and all people. Bless, guide, and govern the children and young people of your church by your Holy Spirit that they may grow in peace and in the knowledge of your word. Grant that they may serve you well and usefully developing their talents not for their own sakes but to your glory and for the welfare of their neighbor. Protect and defend them from all danger and harm, giving your holy angels charge over them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.